What's up everyone? Sam here from ByteByBite.com and in this video I'm going to answer a question that I get all the time, which is, as a software engineer, how do I choose what skill to learn next? And this is a great question because there are so many skills out there. There are so many things with the advent of the internet and with this explosion of technology, there are so many things that we could learn. There are so many resources with which to learn them that choosing which is going to be the one that's going to be most valuable, which is going to be the one that I'm going to enjoy the most is a really tough decision to make. So we're going to talk about that in this video. And if you're looking for more videos on coding careers and interviewing and all that good stuff, go ahead and give us a subscribe and like this video because we're coming out with new content like this every week. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the three most important things that you should keep in mind when choosing which new skills to learn. And these are going to be a great set of tools for you to use to narrow down out of all of the things that you could learn, what are the things that are going to give you the most value? And so the first question that I want you to ask yourself is what is going to be the most valuable skill for you to know in the short term and in the long term, right? What is the skill that ultimately is going to provide that most value in your life and in your career? And there are some ways to think about this. First of all, like, do you have any upcoming projects? Are there any upcoming projects that are going to involve different technologies or knowing different sorts of things, different ways in which you could put your skills to the test? Because if there are upcoming projects, especially if the, if the projects involve technologies that other people on your team don't know, that's a great opportunity for you to learn the thing and demonstrate your skills. That's a great way for you to separate yourself from the pack because if no one knows the skill, and you're the first person to learn it, then you become the expert in that skill. Some other ways to think about this are, are there new technologies that you're excited about, right? If there's something that you're really excited about right now, if there's something that you could see yourself going really deep into, getting really excited about, wanting to become the expert on, that's a great way to look at something that is gonna be valuable to you because not only is it going to potentially be valuable in your career, but it's also going to be value to, valuable to you personally in that you're really going to enjoy it and you're going to want to go deep in it enough that you are going to become the expert in that thing. And finally, you can look at what future needs your company might have. For example, if you're working at a company that has a web-based product right now and you think that in the next year or two, the company is going to need to create a mobile app or get into any other sorts of technology, this is a great opportunity for you to sort of get ahead of the curve. Try and do the Wayne Gretzky thing of going to where the puck is going and not where the puck is, right? Look at where your company is going, what is that trajectory, and see if you can learn technologies that are going to get you ahead of the curve and that are going to allow you to meet the company there. This is definitely not a, you know, a science, right? You're not going to know exactly what's going on, but the more that you can sort of predict and the more you can think about what do I think is going to happen, the more valuable you're going to be able to make the skills that you're learning because the more applicable they're going to be in these different situations. Question number two that you can ask is one of my absolute favorites, and that is what skills are adjacent to the skills that I already know? I think a lot of times we tend to look at skills in isolation, right? We look at, oh, I could learn this language or this framework or this technology, and we don't really look at how everything's connected together. But if we take the skills that we know already, and we say, okay, what skill is adjacent to this current skill? It makes actually learning those things a whole heck of a lot easier. So a perfect example of this was at my old job, I was doing Java programming. And I was primarily programming in Java. We were working on a bunch of different things. I was doing some Android development, and this was before Kotlin was a major thing. So we were doing Java development for Android. And then after I finished that project, I switched to learning Golang, right? I started programming in Go, and that was a great example of something that was actually fairly adjacent to what I was already doing. If you're familiar with Java and Go, you know that they're fairly sim similar languages, and there are just some basic differences in structure, and Go is a bit more similar to C in certain ways. And so it was a different skill to learn, but a lot of the fundamentals were the same. I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. I didn't have to start from scratch because I was able to learn this skill that, I, that was adjacent to the one that I already know, knew, and so I was able to pick it up very quickly. And in the same way, I want you to look at how the skills that you know are adjacent to other skills. Are there other skills that are adjacent that would answer that first question, right, that would be valuable to your team in the future? And so if you think about it this way, it's a great way for you to maximize your skill learning without taking a ton of time because you're using, you're applying the things that you already know and you're building this 
like stronger core of understanding and the stronger core of skills that you can continue to build out from. And finally, question number three, which kind of goes along with the previous one, is what can I combine with what I already know to create network effects? And so think about what a network effect is. I think we're all familiar with this in terms of things like Facebook, right? Facebook, there are network effects where the more people are on Facebook, the more people are gonna want to be on Facebook because their friends are on Facebook. The more people who have a telephone or a cell phone, the more other people are gonna to wanna to have a phone because if you don't have other people on there, you can't call anyone, right? So it's more valuable and it gets exponentially more valuable the more people are using it. And the same is true when you think about the skills that you're learning. Can you create, can you learn multiple skills where there are network effects, where there are complementary elements between those different skills? So here's a perfect example of what this might look like. A perfect example might be, let's say that you are a front end engineer, learning how to do graphic design, learning how to design websites and do these things in an effective way would be hugely beneficial to your skill as a front end engineer. Because not only are you able to build out the UIs that the UI designers are creating, but you can now start filling in a lot of the gaps. You're not necessarily gonna become the UI designer yourself. You're not gonna be the one doing the design, but let's say that there's a question about design. Now you are much more capable of solving that on your own. You're much more capable of doing things in a way that is you know, correct from a design standpoint than you would be if you didn't actually understand how to do design. The flip side of that might be if you were a designer, you might learn how to do HTML and CSS. I think a great, where we see this most commonly is like, look at when you hire a freelancer. If you were gonna hire a freelancer, do you wanna hire two different people, one designer and one dev, or would you like to hire one person who could do both? This is a great example of where you may not be using both of those skills equally. You may not be using all of the skills in equal proportions, right? But having the different knowledge, having those different pieces and being able to fill in the gaps is an incredibly valuable skill. So when you're thinking about what skills to learn, thinking about what, not only what skills are adjacent to the ones that I already know, but what skills will further and get sort of a one plus one equals three effect when I have those two skills that I can combine together. And with that, that's all I got for you in this video. So remember, when you're looking to learn a new skill, think about one, what is gonna be most valuable to me, both in the short term and in the long term? Two, what is adjacent to the skills that I already know? And three, what skills can I learn that are going to create those long-term network effects and that are going to double down when I combine them together? So take these three questions, ask these when you were trying to learn a new skill, and let me know in the comments below which skill is it that you are actually going to learn next. And so with that, that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please do give us a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.